Yom Tov! Welcome to the Philadelphia Assemblies. Today is the 27th day of the 10th month of the year 5781 on the set apart or sacred calendar of Yahuwah. It's also the 13th day of January 2022 on the Gregorian calendar. And today we're going to continue our expository teaching on the Acts of the Apostles. We're going to start in 21 and we're going to go through chapter 24. Okay, this will be Part 6, there are going to be 7 parts to the Acts of the Apostles. So, before we get started, we're going to go ahead and we're going to turn towards uh, Jerusalem, where the Father chose to place His name there, and we're going to open in prayer. Almighty Father Yahuwah, we praise You in all things, and we continually ask that You... Keep your hedge of protection around your chosen, your elect, those that are being called, those that have been called, those that will be, that are being called, and those that are yet to be called. And, and Father, again, we ask that that hedge of protection be around the, all of them, and any of us that are, any of your chosen or elect, or even those that are not yet called, Father, that are sick, we ask that your healing power be upon them. We also ask that you would also uh, give that peace that passes understanding through your spirit to all those that have lost loved ones recently. We all know someone recently that's passed away, or most of us do. And again, we know that it's difficult for families to lose those loved ones. And again, we ask that your spirit, your Ruach, give comfort. And we ask it all, in your, and also, before I close, I also ask that you would send me an extra anointing here today, Father, and let these be your words and not mine. And Father, open hearts and minds to teach them the truth, Father, and where I'm in error, correct me. And where I am right, Father, help us to edify or build up your body. The priesthood after order of Melchizedek, uh, those, the elect, the believers. We ask it all in your precious Son, Yahushua's name. Amen. Okay. Part 6, chapter 21 and verse 1. And it came to pass that after we were gotten from them, okay, or in other words, they had left them, and had launched, in other words, getting ready to sail, we came with a straight course to Kuos. And the day of following, under the, and the day following, roads. And, and from there unto Patera. And finding a ship sailing over unto Phoenicia, we went aboard and, and set sail. Now when we had discovered or we had sighted Cyprus, we left it on, the left, on, the, on our left side and sailed unto Syria and landed at Tyre. For there the ship was unloaded of her burden. Verse 4. And finding disciples, and finding new disciples, I'm adding new there, we stayed there seven days, who said to Paul through the Spirit that he should not go up to Jerusalem. And I would say he probably st remained there until after the Sabbath. That just makes sense. Verse 5. And when we had... Uh, Finished When we had finished those days, we left and went our way, and they all brought us on our way and our way with wives and men, or, or sons, or children in this case. I, I think it's really, this one's probably, and I didn't look it up to make sure, but this is probably not gender specific here. Till we were out of the city, and we kneeled down on the shore and prayed. And when we had said goodbye to each other. We took ship, or we got back on a ship, and they returned home again. And when we had finished our voyage from Tyre, we came to Potolemius and greeted the brethren and stayed with them one day. And the next day, we that were of Shaul's company departed and came unto Caesarea, and we entered into the house of Philip, 
the evangelist. We know what an evangelist is. That would be someone that's out seeking converts, which was one of the seven that stayed with him. And the same man had four daughters, and they were virgins, which did teach the, or speak forth the word of Elohim. Okay? And that's what prophesy means, is to teach or speak forth the word of Elohim. Verse 10, And as we stayed there many days, there came down from Yehuda a certain teacher or prophet named Agabus. And when he was come unto us, he took Shaul, Shaul's belt, and bound, it, bound his own hands and feet, and said, This says the Holy Spirit. So will the Yehudim at Jerusalem bind the man that owns this belt, and will deliver him unto the hands of the nations. And when we had heard these things, both both of us, and they of that place begged him not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Shaul answered, What do you mean to weep and to break my heart? For I am ready not to be bound only, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of Master Yahushua. And when he would not be persuaded, we ceased saying or telling him, the will of Yahuwah be done. Okay? Or the will of actually of Elohim. This Lord here is plural. Verse 15. And after those days we took up our, our, our luggage and went to Jerusalem. There went with us also certain of the disciples of Caesarea and brought with them one Manassan of Cyprus an earlier disciple with whom we should lodge or stay with. Verse 17, And when we were come to Jerusalem, and the brethren received us gladly, and the day following Shaul went in with us unto James, and all the elders were present. And when he had greeted them, he told particularly what things Yahuwah, or the Theos, Again, this, this the Theos, <coughs> excuse me, looks like this in the Greek. The word Theos plus this upside down lollipop is up is the Theos, which is equal to YHWH. Again, so it would be particularly what things Yahuwah had wrought among the nations by his ministry or his service. And when they had heard it, they glorified or they honored the Most High, and said unto him, You see, brother, brother, how many thousands of, the, of Yehudim there are which believe, and they are very zealous or serious of the Torah. And they are informed of you that you teach all the, the Yehudim which are among the nations <coughs> to forsake Moses, or in other words, don't keep the Torah, that they ought not to circumcise their, their children, neither to walk after the customs or the manners. And those customs are, according to the Torah, being circumcised. Verse 22, what is it, that, what, why, what, is, what reason do they do this? The multitude will certainly come together, for they will hear that you are come. Do you, for this reason, this, that we say to you, we have four men which have a pledge on them. Them take and purify yourselves with them. And incur expenses with them. That they may shave their heads. And all may know that those things thereof. They are informed concerning you. In other words, telling them that he wasn't teaching circumcision. Or nothing. Or in other words, that they're not keeping the Torah. Tell them that, show them that that's not true. But that you yourself also walk orderly and keep the Torah. Verse 25. As touching the nations which believe, we have written and concluded that they observe no such thing except only that they keep themselves 
from things offered to idols and from blood and from strangled and from fornication. Now, and, and that again, that's to begin with. When they're first converted, those that are turning, remember we covered this already, to the Most High. Not they, because Moshe was taught in the synagogues every Sabbath day. If they were convicted to keep the Torah, then that would be their faith. And faith is what saved us, not forcing them to keep the commandments. Verse 26, Then Shaul took the men the next day and purified himself, which part of that was to shave his head. With them entreat them entered into the temple, so he entered to the, into the temple with them to signify the completion of the days of purification until that an offering should be offered for every one of them. Remember he said, I am as you are, you have not offended me. So he wasn't teaching them not to keep the Torah. He was telling them they weren't saved by keeping the Torah. Okay? Verse 27, And when the seven days were, were almost ended, or almost over, the Yehudim, which were of Asia Minor, when they saw him in the temple, stirred up all the people, and they laid hands on him. And they weren't praying for him when they did that. Crying out, Men of Israel, help! This is the man that teaches all men everywhere against the people and the Torah and this place and further brought Greeks also into the temple and have defiled this set-apart place. Now this is added here, verse 29. For they had seen before with him in the city of Trof Trophimus an Ephesian whom they supposed that Shaul had brought into the temple. And they thought that, but they didn't see it for themselves. Verse 30, And all the city was, was aroused or uh, upset, and the people ran together, and they took Shaul and took him out of the temple, and immediately the doors were shut. And as they went about to kill him, tiding come in tidings or, or messages came unto the chief captain of the band, that all Jerusalem was in an uproar, who immediately took soldiers and centurions, and again, that's Roman captains over, uh, over a hundred, and ran down into them. And when they saw the chief captain and the soldiers, they stopped beating, they, they stopped the beating of Paul. Verse 33, Then the chief captain came near and took him and commanded him to be bound with two chains and asked who he was and what he had done. And some cried one, some said one thing and some another among the, the crowd. And when he, had, when he could not know for sure for the uh, riot, he commanded him to be carried into the castle. And when he came upon the stairs, so it was that he was carried by the soldiers because of the violence of the people. For the multitude of the people followed after crying or chanting, Away with him. Verse 37, And as Shaul was to be led into the castle, he said unto the chief captain, May I speak to you? Who said, can, who said cannot you speak Greek? He says, Can't you speak Greek? That's what he said to him. 38, Or... Are you not that Egyptian which before these days stirred up a revolt and led out unto the wilderness 4,000 men that were murderers? Verse 39, But Shaul said, I am a man which am a, of the Yehudim of Tarsus, a city in, Sil in Silica, Sia, Silcia, I'm probably not pronouncing that correctly, a citizen of no... Uh, no insignificant city. In other words, it, he was a citizen of Rome. And I beg you, permit me to speak unto the people. And when he had given him permission, Shaul stood up on the, on the stairs and beckoned with the hand unto the people. And when, and when there was made a great silence, when everybody was still, he spake unto them in, he, in the Hebrew language, saying, chapter 22, bad chapter break. Men, brethren, and fathers, 
Here you, you listen to my defense, which I make now to you. Verse 2. This is all added, verse 2. Again, it's in parentheses. And when they heard that he spake in the Hebrew language to them, they kept the more silence. And he said, I am truly a man which am of the Yehudim, born in Tarsus, a city of Silica, or Cilicia. <laughs> Yet brought up in this city at the feet of Gal G G Gamaliel, which is a great teacher of the Torah, and taught according to the perfect manner of the Torah of the fathers, and was zealous towards Elohim. And again, that word Elohim, I'm, I'm that I'm calling Elohim, is this word. It's what it looks like in Greek. It's Theoe, and it's equal to Elohim in the Greek. Okay? So, and was very zealous towards Elohim as you all are this day. Verse 4. And I persecuted, it says this way in the King James, but it means the believers or the saints, unto the death, binding and delivering unto prison both men and women. As also the high Cohen, high Cohen or high priest, doth bear me witness, in other words, he's my witness, and all the counsel of the Sanhedrin, from whom also I received letters unto the brethren, and went to Damascus to bring them, which were there bound into Jerusalem for to be, for, to be punished. And it came to pass that as I made my journey and was come near unto Damascus, about noon, suddenly there shone from the Shamayim, or the heavens, a great light round about me. And I fell into the ground, and I heard a voice saying unto me, Shaul, Shaul, why persecute thou me? Remember, he's speaking to them in the Hebrew tongue. Verse 8, And I answered, Who are you, Master? And he said unto me, I am Yahushua of Nazareth, whom you persecute. Verse 9, And they that were with me saw indeed the light. In other words, he wasn't the only one seeing it. Also, the ones that were with him were witness and were afraid, but they heard not the voice of him that spake to me. Verse 10, And I said, What will I do, Master? And the Master said unto me, Arise and go into Damascus, and there it will be told you of all things which are assigned for you to do. Verse 11, And when... I was blind for the glory of that light, for the brightness of that light. Being led by the hand of them that were with me, I came into Damascus. Verse 12, And, and Ananias, a devout man according to the Torah, having a good report of all the Yehudim which lived there, came unto, him, unto me and, to, and stood and said unto me, Brother Shaul, receive your sight. And the same hour... I looked up upon him, so he had received his sight. Verse 14, And he said, The Theos, again, or YHWH, or Yahuwah, of our fathers has chosen you, that you should know his will, and see that just one, okay, and that's talking about the Messiah, the Messiah, and should hear the voice of his mouth. Okay? The voice of his mouth was the Ruach HaKadosh, just like it was the voice of the Father's mouth. Because when that Spirit came down on our, our Mashiach in the form of a, a bodily form of a dove, from that time on, that Ruach spoke through him. And that's what that's talking about when it's what it's saying here. It says, for, he's, and again, I'm going to read the whole 14 again. And he said, Yahuwah of our fathers hath chosen you that you should know his will and see that just one, okay, it's what it says in the King James, which we know is talking about Master Yahushua, the Mashiach, and should hear the voice of his mouth. And the voice of his mouth was most definitely the Ruach HaKadosh. For you shall be his witness unto all men of what you have seen and heard. And now why delay, why do you delay? Get up and be baptized and wash away your sins calling on the name of the Master, okay? 
And it came to pass that when I was come again to Jerusalem, even while I prayed in the temple, I was in a trance. Verse 18, And I saw him saying unto me, Hurry up and get, get and come here quickly out of Jerusalem, for they will not receive your testimony concerning me. Verse 19, And I said, Sir, or Master, they know that I am I am imprisoned and beat in I was imprisoned and beat in this in every synagogue by them that believe on you. And when the blood of your of your martyr Stephen was shed, I also standing by, uh, was standing by and consenting unto his death, in other words, in agreement with his death, and kept the clothing of them, in other words, he held the coats of them that killed him. And he said unto me, and again, this is the voice of the Mashiach, which was the Ruach HaKadosh, which is the Father's Spirit. Depart from me, I will send you far from here and into the nations. Verse 22, And they gave him attention until this word, and then lifted up their voices and said, Away with such a fellow from the earth. Or in other words, kill him. For it is not fit that he should live. Verse 23, And as they cried out and cast off their clothes and threw dust into the air, the chief captain commended him, or commanded him, I'm sorry, to be brought into the castle and commanded that he should be examined by scourging or by whipping, that he might know, therefore, they, the, the reason they cried so against him. Verse 25, And as they brought him with, th with th thongs, Shaul said unto the centurion, the captain of a hundred, that I stood by, that stood by, it, is it lawful for you to whip a man that is a Roman and not yet condemned? 26, And when the centurion heard that, he went and told the chief captain, saying, Take care what you're doing, for this man is a Roman. 27. Then the captain, the chief captain came and said unto him, Tell me, are you a Roman? He said, Yes. Verse 28. And the chief captain answered with a great sum, obtained a free, this freedom. And Shaul said, But I was free born, and, or born a Roman citizen. Verse 29. And then immediately they departed from him, which should have examined him, or you know, uh, judged him. And the chief captain also was afraid after he knew that he was a Roman and because he had bound him on the next day because he would have known the certainty for his reason was accused of the Yehudim. He, he let, set him free from his bonds and commanded the chief Kohenim, plural, and all their council, or their assembly, to appear and brought Shaul down and set him before them. 23. And Shaul, and Shaul, earnestly beholding, or looking on, the council said, Men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience before the Mighty One until this day. And again, that word is El. The Mighty One is El. Hebrew word is equal as El, which means the Mighty One, and that's what it looks like in Greek, okay? So that's what this word is here. It's the Mighty One. Until this day, verse 2, because he's speaking to Hebrews, he, he, so they, he, they would have understood him saying El and being meaning the Mighty One. And the high priest Ananias commanded them that stood by him to strike him on the mouth. Then said Shaul unto him, Yahuwah will smite you, you whitewashed wall, for you for sitting, for sitting you to, to or sitting you to judge me after the Torah and command me to be strict struck contrary to the Torah. Verse 4. And they that stood by insulted you. The, the high priest of Elohim, Theoe in the Greek, verse 5, Then said Shaul, 
I, I didn't know, brethren, that he was the high priest, or Coenum, for it is written, you shall not speak evil of the ruler of your people. Verse 6, but Shaul perceived that the one part were Sadducees and the other part Pharisees. He cried out, or he called out to the council or the, or the Sanhedrin, men and brethren, I am a Pharisee, the son of a Pharisee, of the hope and the resurrection of the dead, I am called in question. Verse 7, And when he had so said, there arose a, a division between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and the multitude was divided. Now, he knew that the Sadducees didn't believe in the resurrection of the dead, and he knew that the Pharisees did. So he used, he was, you know, he was picking with that, which is true. He was talking about our Messiah being resurrected. Verse 8, for the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, verse 8, neither messenger nor spirit, but the Pharisees confess both or believe both. Verse 9, and there arose a great cry and the scribes that were of the Pharisees part arose or stood up and fiercely argued saying, we find no evil in this man, but if a spirit or an angel have spoken to him, let us not fight against Elohim, Theoe in the Greek. Verse 10. And when there arose a great dispute, the captain, the chief captain, fearing that at least Paul or Shaul should have been pulled in pieces of them, commanded the soldiers to go down and to take him by force from among them and to bring him into the castle. Verse 11. And that and the night following, the the, the Lord here, and this the Lord again is talking about the Messiah, but it's also knowing that that's, that's Ruach that's speaking to him. Okay? Stood by him and said, Be of good cheer or courage, Shaul, for as you have testified of me in Jerusalem, so must you bear witness also at Rome. Verse 12, And when it was daylight, or when the sun came up, certain of the Yehudim, uh, gathered together and declared themselves liable, saying that they would neither eat nor drink till they had killed Shaul. Verse 13. And they were more than 40 which had made this conspiracy. Verse 14. And they came to the chief Coenum, plural, and the elders and said, we have declared ourselves liable that we will eat nothing until we have killed Shaul. Verse 15. Now therefore, or, or now for this reason, you with the uh, council of elders, the Sanhedrin, signify to the chief captain that he bring him down unto you tomorrow as though he would ask something or ask thoroughly concerning him and we before he come near are ready to kill him verse 16 and when Shaul's sister sister's son heard of their lying in wait he went and entered into the castle and told Shaul verse 17 then Shaul called one of the centurions unto him and said bring this young man unto the chief captain for he has a certain thing that he has something to say to him verse 18 so he took him and brought him to the chief captain and said Shaul the prisoner called me to him and asked me to bring this young man unto you who has something to say to you who has something to say to you verse 19 then the chief captain took him by the hand and went with him beside him privately and asked him, what is it that you have to tell me? Verse 20. And he said, the Yehudim have agreed to ask you that you would bring down Shaul tomorrow unto the Sanhedrin as though they would inquire some, some, something of him more thoroughly, or question him more thoroughly. Verse 21. But do not, but you don't yield unto them. Now he said, but you don't yield to them. 
for they for their lie for they lie and wait for him, uh, for him of them more than 40 men so more than 40 of them were waiting so they could kill him which have declared themselves liable that they will, will neither eat nor drink till they have killed him and now are they read now they're ready looking for a promise from you so the chief captain then let the young man depart and commanded him you see you see that you tell no man that you have showed you have disclosed these things to me or told me these things 23 and he called unto him two centurions saying make your, make yourselves ready 200 soldiers to go to Caesarea and horsemen uh, three score in other words a hundred horsemen and provide them with uh, four-legged beasts that they may set Paul on and bring him safe unto Felix the governor and he wrote a letter after this matter Claudius Lysias, Lysias unto the most excellent governor Felix sending sends greetings this man was taken of the Yehudim and should have been killed of them. Then I came with an army and rescued him, having understood that he was a Roman. And when I would have known, the, and when I had known the cause why they accused him, I brought him forth unto you, unto their counsel, whom I perceived to be accountable of questions of the Torah. In other words, they were trying to hold him quest, uh, accountable to things in the Torah. But to have nothing laid to his charge worthy of death. They said nothing or even to be bound or jailed. Verse 30. And when it was told me how that the Yehudim laid wait for the man, I immediately uh, sent to you and gave commandment to his accusers also to, to say before you, what they had, uh, what had, what they had against him, and then he, and he said farewell or goodbye. Verse thirty-one. Then the soldiers, as it was commanded them, took Shaul and brought him by night to Antip Antipatris. Verse thirty-two. On the next day they left the horsemen to go with him, and returned to the castle. Who, when they came to Caesarea, they delivered the letter to the governor presented Shaul also before them. And when the governor had read the letter, he asked of what province he was. And when he had understood that he was of Cilicia, verse 35, I will hear you, said he said, when, when your accusers are also come. In other words, I'll hear you when the accusers stand before me as well. And he commanded him to be kept in Herod's judgment hall, chapter 24. And after five days, Ananias the high Cohen descended with the elders and with, this, with a certain orator or speaker named Tertellus, Tertellus, who informed the governor against Shaul. In other words, he was representation that representing those people against Shaul. Verse 2, and when he was called forth, Tertullus began to accuse him, saying, Seeing that by you we enjoy great quietness, and that very, that very worthy deeds are done unto this nation by your provision. Verse 3, ver, verse three we accept it always and in all places. Most noble Felix, with all thankfulness, notwithstanding, you know, in other words, not only that I be not further hindered unto you, I beg you that you would hear us of your fair kindness a few words. For we have found this man a pestilent fellow, and fellows added, and a mover of sedition among all the Yehudim throughout the world, 
and the ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. In other words, calling on the name of Yahushua, the Nazarene, verse 6, who also have gone about to uh, desecrate the temple whom we took and would have judged according to our Torah. But the chief captain, Lysias, came upon us and with great violence took him away out of our hands, verse 8, commanding his accusers to come to you by examining of whom yourself may take knowledge of all these things whereof we are accu we accuse him. In other words, all the charges that we accuse Shaul of. Verse 9, And the Yehudim also agreed, saying that these things were so. Then Shaul, after that, the governor had beckoned unto him to speak, answered, For as much as I know, that you have been of many years a judge unto this nation, I do the more cheerfully answer for myself. Verse 11, Because that you may understand that there are yet but twelve days since I went up to Jerusalem for to worship. So I know it was only twelve days ago when he went up to Jerusalem to worship. And they neither found me in the temple disputing with any man, neither raising up the people or stirring up the people, neither in the synagogues nor in the city. Neither can they prove the things thereof they now accuse me. But this I confess to you, that after the way which they call heresy or a sect, so worship I Elohim, the Elohim of my fathers, believing all things which are witnessed, which are written in the Torah and in the prophets or the Tanakh. Verse 15, and have hope toward Elohim, which they themselves also admit that there will be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and the unjust, which we know to be the great white throne judgment. Verse 16, And herein do I exercise myself to have always a, con a, a conscience blameless toward Theon, the Most High, and toward men, now after many years, I came to bring charitable gifts, or his offerings, to my nation and offerings. Okay, gifts and offerings. Verse 18, there, For this reason certain of the Yehudim from Asia Minor found me purified in the temple, neither with a multitude nor with a disturbance. Verse 19, who ought to have been there before you and object if they had anything against me. Or else let these say here, these same here say, if they have found any wrongdoing in me while I stood before the Sanhedrin, except it be for this one voice that I cried standing among them concerning the resurrection of the dead, I am called in question by you this day. Verse 22, And when Felix heard these things, having a more complete knowledge of that way, or Christianity, or the believers, they got Christianity, but it's talking about the believers of Mashiach, he declared them and said, When Lysias, the chief captain, will come down, I will fully examine your matter. And he commanded a centurion to guard Shaul and to let him have liberty and that he should forbid none of his acquaintances to serve or to come to him. And after a certain amount of days, when Felix came with his wife Drusilla, which was a, a Jewess or a, a one of the Yehudim, he sent for Shaul and heard him concerning the faith in the Mashiach, or the Anointed One. Verse 25, And as he reasoned of the righteousness and self-control and judgment to come, Felix trembled and answered, Go your way, for now when I, when I have a opportune time, I will call for you. Verse 26, He hoped also that money 
should have been given him of Shaul, that he might release him. There, for this reason, he sent for him an and, and, and oftener and con communed with him. In other words, he kept sending for him and talking to him because he was hoping he, that Shaul would give him money so he could let him go. Last verse. But after two years, Porcilius Festus came into Felix's position and Felix, willing to show the Yehudim a pleasure, left Paul in jail. And we're going to stop right, stop right there. And the next part, which will be part 7, will be finished. Start here. Part 7. Okay. And I know this was probably pretty sharp, but we got four more chapters. Okay. Through chapter 28. We're going to do 25 through 28. And then we'll have this completed. And then we'll move on to the uh, the epistle of Shaul to the to the Romans. Okay, so if you haven't yet subscribed to the Philadelphia Assemblies, please do so. Okay, again, it costs you nothing. You're under no obligation to us in any way. If you subscribe, then if you like any of our videos, you don't probably don't well, maybe not like them all, but if you like any of them, give them a thumbs up on YouTube. Okay. And then share them on your Facebook page so others can see them, okay? And hit that, uh, that notification bell so you get notified of our next video. And may Yahuwah bless until we meet again. And I appreciate anybody that's praying for me because I'm certainly getting better and I have to give it over to that. So may, again, may Yahuwah bless.